Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Utah is home to the last uranium mill in the United States, uh, the White Mesa Mill. Now, domestic production of uranium has plummeted over the last several decades. It was about 40 years ago when we reached our peak, when we were producing in the range of about 40 million pounds a year. Um, but in, in 2018, uh, uh, toward the end of this chart, we produced just 1.47 million pounds. Now, that doesn't mean that demand has waned. In fact, demand actually has remained relatively constant over the entire 70-plus period depicted in this chart. It's just that when domestic production diminishes, we make up for that on the international market. So in 2015, for example, the United States imported 65 million pounds of uranium. House Democrats are now uh, uh, wanting to impose some new features on, on this part of the economy, as has been mentioned already in this hearing. Uh, in their reconciliation package, uh, one that would uh, institute a uh, royalty on hard rock minerals like uranium. This royalty, uh, as it has been mentioned, would be 8 percent for some, that is 8 percent of gross income uh, for new operations, and 4 percent uh, on gross income for existing operations. And this is something that I believe would have a crippling effect on many domestic mineral markets in the United States. Ms. Swinney, I'd like to start with you. Does, how does U.S. dependence on mineral imports potentially threaten everything from our supply chains broadly to our infrastructure and our energy security? And specifically, how, how could a royalty like that being proposed in the House and a dirt tax like what they're proposing over there impact our ability to secure our domestic mineral supply chains? Thank you, Senator, for that question. Um, and I think uranium is a, a great example of how we've become excessively over-reliant on foreign sources of minerals over the years. I mean, when the, in, when the uh, Energy Information Agency can't even provide uh, the actual amount produced in the United States last year because it's proprietary information because there's so few producers, that's kind of a sad state of affairs. But it is one example of many, uh, how we've become incredibly reliant on foreign sources of minerals, even for workhorse minerals like silver and copper that are used in, in solar and in electric vehicles and every aspect of modern life. Um, we're importing 80% of the silver, and we've got a lot of silver resources in the United States, and currently 37% of our copper comes from foreign sources. These types of punitive fees that take us outside the total government take of our competitors are destined to really uh, freeze the investment in the United States. And those, the, the other countries will profit from that. And some of those other countries are not our allies either. Right, right. Not our allies and aren't, aren't uh, to put it mildly, anxious to see us emerge as the a global front runner in green energy technology or, or um, any of the high tech sectors where the United States has some real potential. Um, now, they, they also, as I mentioned a minute ago, also, also threw in um, into their package what they're calling the reclamation fee, uh, which is, as I understand it, seven cents that would go to the Secretary of the Interior for every ton of displaced earth. Now, help me understand something. It's, it's already the case that mines are required to secure and reclaim all the disturbed areas of mining activity, correct? That's already required. So this provision would end up requiring honest operators to pay for their reclamation work of other operators. Or like, what, what is the point of this particular issue? Or isn't this really just um, imposing an additional burden that could effectively force the relocation of some of these operations overseas. Absolutely. I think that that fee is incredibly burdensome, and it is really on the movement of dirt, which has to take place for you to be able to get to these minerals that we need so desperately. <clears throat> Mr. Brown, um, you mentioned in your testimony that your company has had a significant impact on the rural towns where you operate. And I think this is the story of a lot of Utah operators. Um, 
you mentioned the impact that the royalty and the dirt fee could, uh, could have on you and on your company and other companies like it. After hearing uh, uh, from Ms. Sweeney on the disparate impacts that these uh, uh, that might be imposed by the royalty and by the dirt fees. Would you say that the proposal submitted by the House Democrats, namely the um, imposing of a gross royalty tax of 8% for new operations and 4% for existing ones, wouldn't that add to market disruptions and potentially force some of these operations abroad? And, and, and wouldn't that also have the potential to favor market incumbents and disfavor new entrants to the market? given the disparity between 4% and 8%? Uh, yes, I absolutely agree with that. Um, the, um, there is foreign competition for us. Um, the, um, the minerals that, uh, that we're mining, again, are low value, but they work their way through the value chain in the manufacturing system, and they become a part of the end product, whatever that is. And there's hundreds of end products that use bentonite. So if we increase the cost um, to Wyoban, and Wyoban has to increase the cost down the supply chain, it's very likely that our customers will be seeking other sources of supply so that their products can remain competitive and viable. And there are foreign... Uh, mining companies, bentonite companies, that would be eager to enter this market in the United States. So it would have a dramatic impact on us. And the other thing that I want to mention, we talk about the 8% and the 4%. In our business, uh, we have a plan of operation that encompasses a, uh, let's say, a relatively small area. And we are updating that plan of operation as we move forward. So the 4% would apply to what we have today. But when we look at this, we think in the future, we're going to be paying 8% under the current uh, proposal. Senator Lee, thank you. Thank you.